Well, the government really needs, I think, is a cabinet position on marketing. I don't think anybody knows how to take this thing to the public. And what's happened is we've had social media going the other way. The same thing that happened with the interference of elections and bots and, and going through Facebook is actually what's being done now to get people to think that you shouldn't be vaccinated. The FDA approves chemotherapy drugs. It's the same FDA that just approved Pfizer. This is something that the government is saying is okay, but politicians on both sides of the aisle are doing it. We're not getting the message delivered because we're talking to everybody as though they all see things the same way. They don't. There's 330 million Americans and they see things differently. And we need to figure out how to get something conveyed to people whose brain processes it differently than everybody else's. All of the vaccine talk is crazy. It's just so complicated. And everyone keeps suing everyone else, no matter how many news stories you see or the variety of sources you seek out. And don't read the comment section. It'll make your brain hurt. One thing is for sure, trust is at an all time low, like super low. And how do you even gain the trust of people when honestly, we're cynical, we're angry, and we say, I'm right, you're wrong, shut up. With so many questions, we decided to look to the experts in science and faith. First, we talked with Dr. Vardian, a board-certified infectious disease specialist at HCA Houston Healthcare. Then, we wanted to include the PSA from Pope Francis because, well, it's the Pope. He's pretty close to what we need in an expert on faith for Catholics, and a lot of people love him. Before you get started, make sure to subscribe to Max Studios and hit the bell icon to be notified of our new episodes and click the thumbs up to give us a like. And check us out on Instagram and TikTok at Max Studios UST to stay in the loop and get a behind the scenes sneak preview of all of the shows we're working on. Now to the rundown. According to a poll from the Kaiser Family Foundation, 12% of all unvaccinated American adults are waiting to see what happens with the vaccines, while 13% say they definitely will not get the shot. Let's get right into it with Dr. Vardian describing what's out there on the vaccine. You know, you mentioned earlier there's some distrust. And so there's all sorts of crazy myths. You, you go online and you can find, you just put in COVID vaccine myths and it's this stuff that's it's like science fiction, microchips and mind control. And it's, I mean, all sorts of nutty stuff. And I mean, I, I will say uh, to the audience that these vaccines are incredibly safe. They do not produce infertility in women. That's another myth that's going around. These are safe for women, even during pregnancy, lactating women. I mean, we, again, unless you've got some real bona fide contraindication to getting the vaccine, which is pretty much like severe allergy to, to something in the vaccine, you really should get it. Now, Dr. Vardian goes into detail discussing how science evolves and how they learn from the vaccine. We've learned a lot during the course of this pandemic, um, and, and that's that's understandable. It's a it's actually a new disease. It's it's similar. We've had other coronavirus diseases, but in a sense, the the um, extent of it and the scope of it is is what's really different from from some of the other ones that we've had we didn't start off not knowing anything we've actually dealt with other types of outbreaks before but just the scope of this uh, really was was very extensive and again initially we said well it's sort of like the flu it's like a bad flu it's a this and people can frame that in their minds. They know what that means. And that kind of worked against us a little bit because there's still a lot of people who say, oh, it's just the flu and I don't even get a flu shot. And I never get the flu. So this isn't going to hurt me any more than all that flu stuff I've been hearing about for years. And that's, that's not really fair, but that's the mentality still a lot of people have in their minds. Making assumptions definitely hurt some credibility for the medical community in the beginning, but Dr. Vardian stresses the importance of transparency. You know, it's important that there be um, transparency and communication. And um, um, uh, as we learn more, we change the, you know, the opinions we have. I mean, that's that's what science is, is, is really just uh, learning, studying it more, and you may have to overthrow your preconceived notions because they're simply not true anymore. So I think it's important that you not get too 
um, well, you know, in April they said such and such, and now you're saying something else. Well, of course, because we learn more. This this virus has been studied probably more than any any virus in in, in history, uh, given the global extent of it and the massive numbers of cases. There's the scientists in every country that are studying it every conceivable way, and. And if you watch the evolution of it, we've learned a lot. Now, the Delta variant is is different from the original strain we had. So what we thought was true and, in fact, was true about Alpha is not necessarily true about some of the other strains, like the Delta one that we're dealing with nationwide. And so um, it's not that anybody lied about the facts before. It's not as though we were mistaken. It's that the virus evolved. So our knowledge and our understanding have to evolve as well. As all of this is evolving, it's like we have to hold two things in tension, our own reason and experience and the experience and reason of the medical community. And it has to be a both and scenario because in this situation, we all don't know what we don't know. It's important to to recognize that science evolves. We didn't start off knowing everything we did about this virus, and we're still learning more. And, and that's 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 a good thing. We're studying it a lot, we're monitoring it a lot, and, and so we're not resting on the laurels like, well, you know, in April of 2020, it was such and such. It's like, yeah, but we're not in April of 2020 any longer, so you can't rely on that. It's not fair to the public to rely on our level of understanding and information that so how did the vaccine come about so quickly? You know, the, the vaccine is, I mean, it's nothing short of miraculous because we had a disease that was, um, you know, killing lots of people globally. I mean, it's a global infection. And so um, as an infectious disease specialist, I can tell you, we haven't gotten rid of any diseases with antibiotics. If, if you can't vaccinate against it, you're in trouble. I mean, things like smallpox, no one, practically has ever seen a case. You, the last case of smallpox was in the late 70s. I mean, the world is smallpox free, only disease in mankind that's ever been eradicated purely through vaccination. I mean, tetanus, diphtheria, we don't see these things anymore. It's because of the vaccination. So, you know, if you can vaccinate against something, that's how you control the disease because it, you can't possibly manage it afterwards. And it's important to for everyone who looks at this to realize there was n absolutely no shortcut. Every single thing that needed to be done, phase one, phase two, phase three, volunteer studies, every single safety check was actually done. It just was done very quickly and sometimes sort of seamlessly as opposed to having the bureaucracy of, you know, wait for this, wait for this, wait for this. That's why it's called Operation Warp Speed. I mean, it was unprecedented in the resources that were put into this, but it's reassuring to know that there were absolutely no shortcuts taken. This is as safe as any vaccine that, that has ever been developed for any other disease. As you learn more and you study more, you end up changing your recommendations. And so we're leaning now towards, you know, it's probably not a bad idea if you get a booster shot to kind of you know, re-up your antibody levels and, and protect everybody. And again, we're dealing with this Delta variant, which we know is more contagious. And so just from the sheer volume of numbers of cases, even if the vaccine is 95% effective, that 5% of 10 million people, that's a lot of cases, or 100 million people, or 300 million, you know, it's a lot of cases that might be developing. And so we, you know, we sometimes want to be overly cautious because we're trying to protect people's lives. And I feel like we've heard it over and over again. The vaccine isn't just about you and what you think, not about me and what I think. From a public health standpoint, you getting the vaccine, you may protect your whole family or your friends. And in, in fact, uh, you know, we, we know that younger children, the vaccine is not authorized for say a six-year-old. Um, the CDC just had a, a, a WebEx on a couple of days ago. And it was all about pediatric COVID. And the, the speakers repeatedly said the way to protect kids is get the adults vaccinated. I mean, you basically, you we talk about herd immunity, but basically if you're not gonna get it and you're not gonna spread it, your kids, even though they're not vaccinated, 
they will be protected. On the other hand, if you as an adult and everybody around the kids doesn't, you're just, you know, you're playing Russian roulette. The kids are going to, you know, get COVID. Whether they get sick or not, that's just, you know, it's up to the individual case. But why risk it? Why risk your kid getting sick? And and frankly, our pediatric hospitals are bursting at the same nationwide. And so there's really a plea from the pediatricians and the pediatric hospital associations, get vax, get the adults vaccinated because that'll protect the kids. Pope Francis and some others even took time to put together a PSA about the vaccine. Gracias a Dios y el trabajo de muchos, hoy tenemos vacunas para protegernos del COVID-19. Ellas traen esperanza para acabar la pandemia, pero solo si están disponibles para todos y si colaboramos unos con otros. La terrible pandemia del coronavirus ha causado enfermedad, muerte y sufrimiento al mundo entero. Que Dios nos conceda la gracia de afrontarla con la fuerza de la fe, asegurando que las vacunas estén disponibles para todos, para que todos podamos vacunarnos. Vacunarse con vacunas autorizadas por las autoridades competentes es un acto de amor. Y ayudar a que la mayoría de la gente lo haga es un acto de amor. Amor a uno mismo, amor a los familiares y amigos, amor a todos los pueblos. El amor es también social y político. Hay amor social y amor político. Es universal, siempre desbordante de pequeños gestos de caridad personal capaces de transformar y mejorar las sociedades. This is one situation where faith and science are in agreement. I feel like we should be celebrating rather than calling our lawyers. This is why I find what University of St. Thomas in Houston is doing that is so special. Our campus leadership isn't mandating vaccines, but they are giving incentives to those already vaccinated and those who get a vaccine. There is a certain level of trust they are giving to the campus community. In a way they are saying, you know our values and core beliefs, goodness, discipline, knowledge, and community. And we expect you to uphold those things in all instances. You have your free will, but we hope you will consider doing the best thing in this moment for the good of the community. Take some time today and think about who you trust in this conversation. Better yet, find someone who you trust who doesn't think the same thing about the situation as you do and encounter them with love and openness. Why aren't you getting the vaccine? Is it you don't believe in COVID? Is it you don't think you'll get sick? And that's what I think we need to talk about. It's more than just you. It's everybody around you. It's your family. You wouldn't want to be, a, you know, an unwitting, um, you know, vector of, of infection to your grandmother or, or your aunt. Or I mean, it's just something that I think you need to take some responsibility on yourself, not to be mean about it. But, you know, we want everybody. It's not, we're not singling out young adults. We want old adults. We want teenagers. We want everybody vaccinated. Take some time and ponder deeply what really matters. The Rundown is a podcast produced by Max Studios at the University of St. Thomas in Houston. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Max Studios UST.